Hello, it's Austin again. It's Christmas. No, it's Christmas. If I make these videos in time. It's the time of the year where most people can finally stop working to enjoy the holiday. Well, I'm not most people, and I cannot end 2020 without making a Christmas crown. A holiday crown. The crown obsession never stops. So on Instagram, I posted this big review of the sketch a few weeks ago. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you haven't followed me yet, please go to It's Austin Joe and follow me because I'm desperate. So how did I come up with that design? I wanted to have elements of Christmas, like these Christmas plants such as Ivy, Poinsettia, Holly, and and so I went on to AliExpress and I look for these metal charms that resembles this image, scale them to the accurate life size scale, and then printed them out. And so we have these cutouts, and now all I need to do is to placing them, positioning them, puzzling with them until I find the perfect placement of these charms. And yep, that's Mariah Carey because you can't talk about Christmas without talking about the Christmas Queen. Christmas. And once I'm happy with the design, I glue them down. And we have the draft sketch. And then I just scan the draft design with this app called Cam Scanner. So we can work on the next step, which is drawing the detail blueprint of the crown in AutoCAD. I've been using AutoCAD every time I want to design something. Hand drawing is great, but in AutoCAD you can multiply the stones and all of the element, and it's so helpful. There we go, the outline of the frame. And now all I need to do is to pick up the pencil and turning this blueprint into an illustration sketch by giving it some shading. And finally, to finish the illustration, I pick up some color markers to bring this design to life. Now that I have it designed, I can finally work on the actual crown. So this piece right here is the back of the crown. And it's adjustable as you can see. Most of my crowns are adjustable so... God, please don't make me go through these steps again because I'm so because it's so repetitive and boring every time so if you want to make this crown if you really do want to make this crown you can check out this video where i have detailed instruction on how to make the adjustable band for the crown i will link it in the description box and i will also put it in this i button right here now for the actual front of the crown take another metal headband and we're gonna stretch them out and bend in them so we can have a semicircle like so stretch and stretch stretch and stretched and the first thing that I do is to make the wire work the wire frame of this crown so that we have the foundation so I take another headband you can use some thick or strong wire but I'm just gonna make use of the headband and pretty much I just used a flat nose plier to bend this wire into the exact curvature that we have on the sketch. The basic idea here is to have a flat blueprint of the crown so that we can use that as a guide to make the framework. And once we finish with that, we will roll that frame into a circular shape. And to attach this wire onto the base, I just use a little dab of uh, sorry E6000 to hold it in place. And of course, gluing it will not be enough, so we will have to wire wrap it. This is 0.5 millimeter wire or 24 gauge wire. Make sure that each of the loop is placed tightly next to each other. A pair of plier would be very helpful for this step. So I continue with wrapping all of the remaining contact points between this U shape and the base. In the meantime, I would like to ask you guys if in the future you guys would prefer the type of tutorial which is lengthy, long and detailed so you guys can follow from top to bottom or you guys would prefer a more fun, compact tutorial so we can skip through all the boring steps and I would just gibberish about random nonsense that's just mildly related to the project. In fact, 
I'm gonna do that right now. So, huh? I guess I did. Uh huh. Actually, I don't know what to talk about right now. So let's go back to the boring instruction. In the meantime of waiting for the metal charms to arrive, I actually found these butterfly filigree in my storage box that I used for one of the previous crown video. So I think it would be great to recycle these filigree into our centerpiece, which is the poinsettia flower. So I just cut off the butterfly, murder the butterfly, put him in a blender, shit on it, bomb it on it, eat it, whatever Lady Gaga said. And once we ended up with 10 pieces, including the 5 big petals and 5 small petals, which originally was the wings of the butterfly that we massacre. We can finally glue these petals together to make the poinsettia. And yeah, I kept saying E6000 glue, but the glue I'm actually using right here is a ripoff of E6000. I don't know for sure the ingredient, but it works for me. And besides, I don't have any X6000 left in my house. And I find it too badly designed. This Chinese ripped up version has a thin nozzle, so you can precisely squeeze out the amount of glue that you use. And I found that very handy. Why doesn't the X6000 company do this for their product? And while you're gluing the pieces together, make sure that you clamp the pieces together tightly while the glue set. For the center of this poinsettia, we lay a 2 carat brilliant white diamond which translated to cheap rhinestone is 8mm. The stone is set in this prawn setting that has holes in it so you can beat them. I mean beat them, B-E-A-D, not beat them up like a, you know what I mean. Wrap the prong setting of the stone onto the filigree. And once that finished, we can finally glue on the smaller petals. And while waiting for the glue to set, we clamp them together and we ended up having this kind of look like a fidget spinner. Remember when fidget spinner was such a big thing? Now no one talks about it anymore. And then three days later, my metal charms finally arrived in the mail. Look at these gorgeous bitches. Those look like holly leaves. This charm right here consists of two leaves, the bigger one and the smaller one, and I want to separate them. So in order to separate that, you're gonna use a scissor to cut it open. No silly, of course not. You're gonna use a metal handsaw. This is probably the first time on this channel that I brought out a saw and a vise. So the vise is to clamp the piece in place while I'm sawing it. I watch some YouTube channels of real jewelers who work with gold, silver, and real diamonds like Bobby White or Pablo Sima de Villa. I'm sorry if I butcher your name. But yeah, this step makes me feel like a real jeweler, which I'm not. And as Mariah Carey is a leaning gentleman, you can visually see me flinched at her high note. And that's not pixie dust, that's metal. Don't breathe this. For these beautiful leaves that has rhinestone encrusted in them, I, I love these so much I have to buy those and somehow incorporate it into the crown. But it's too big so I have to break them off into two separate pieces. Before we connect the pieces together, we will have to apply a coat of clear nail polish on top to protect the gold color. Alright, so for the next step, we're gonna connect all the pieces together onto the wire work. The basic idea is quite simple, you're just gonna dab a little bit of glue onto the contact point and then you're gonna secure it by wire wrapping. Basically, it's like tying knots to hold the pieces together, but instead of using string, you're using wire. So 24 gauge wire works. You're gonna wire wrap it around a few loops and make sure that the loops are closely tight. And once that's done, apply a drop of liquid super glue so that the wire wrapping won't unravel. So under this poinsettia centerpiece, I'm gonna wire wrap a 6mm white diamond. All of the rhinestone and gemstones I'll be using in this video are set in prong setting. 
which means that you can wire wrap the gemstone onto the frame without the need of glue. So for example, with this gemstone, it has four holes in the back of the prong setting and we're gonna thread the wire through the two holes one end to the other end and wrapping the two extruding excess wire around the frame. For this leaf piece, I'm gonna wire wrap it around the stem of the leaves and the excess wire will be wrapped onto the frame. It's 4 p.m. and I haven't eaten lunch yet. I'm so hungry. When I was hungry, I told my grandparents that my place had bread. For the holly bundle right here, I'm gonna use two of the big leaves and two of the small leaves that we have cut apart earlier. You know, my instruction wouldn't be the most helpful thing because you will have to do this by yourself to feel the pressure and the tension in order to find the perfect spot to place these charms on top of each other so that you find the perfect balance to lock them in place before you wire wrap them. I do aware that's a lot of wire and it looks kind of ugly with the giant knot in the middle. But remember, we're gonna add more gemstone on top of this center later and we'll cover up all of the ugliness. There's a lot of wire wrapping involved in this process and I just followed the sketch. The whole process actually took me an entire Wednesday from morning to the next morning of Thursday because I'm a workaholic and I got carried away. But yeah, it's not, it's not very healthy to do that so if you're gonna make a crown, I think you're gonna spend at least two days for this process. The general idea here is to have as much contact point that you're gonna wire wrap around. If you find any wiggle, 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 then that is not right. You will have to find another contact point to wire wrap it shut. It's supposed to stay still. Otherwise, the crown would be weak and after wears and handlings, it will break. As you're working towards the end of this crown, you're gonna find that it's quite tricky to find some space to thread the wire through. So your best friend here is a needle nose pliers. And at some point, I can't even find a spot for the wire to grip onto. I had to saw a bit of this leaf off in order to make a slit for the wire to wrap on. Mama Mia is finally finished. What a Christmas miracle. And immediately after I finished this frame, look at what came in the mail. Gemstones. I have chosen a selection of green and red color stones. These beautiful pear shaped emeralds and marquees rubies. And for something a little bit new and unusual on this channel, this is my first time that I bought these diamonds chain. These are 3mm stones connected into a continuous chain. It's really helped me cutting down the time for crafting compared to using individual rhinestones that I will have to use a pen to pick each individual stone and glue them on top of the crown. So below the centerpiece of the crown, I picked out this four carat brilliant white diamond. I glued the diamond chain around this diamond. And we have this beautiful piece, which reminds me of those engagement rings. Baby. 
Okay, so we have holly, we have poinsettia, we have these beautiful leaves and all of the stuff. What is missing in this Christmas crown is the ivy leaves. And I couldn't find any metal charms that resemble the shape of the ivies. So I will have to create them myself from diamonds. Before I connect the diamonds together into the ivy shape, we will have to give them a base. So I use these aluminum sheet that I cut out from soda cans and I use a lot of these for a lot of my crowns. You can check them out here, here, here to see how I extracted the sheet from the soda can. Anyway, I painted the back of the aluminum sheet in gold spray paint. So to make the ivy shape, I used three different types of diamonds. Now apply a bunch of E6000 glue into even layer on top of the aluminum sheet, drop the stones onto the glue. And you will have to wait for the glue to completely dry. That usually took an hour or two hours. And so in the meantime, I go and grab a, a delicious lunch. After lunch, I come back and the glue has set and we can finally cut off the ivy shape. It's still quite sticky, but you know, for any sticky situation, you just gonna go through with it. Caesar is not the best of friends for this step right here. A thread snipper would be a better choice. I use uh, leftover pieces of wire headband to make the stem. And I just wire them on as usual. So earlier we talked about hiding the ugliness of these wire knots with rhinestones, right? So these are holly leaves and in the center there's holly berry. No, not that holly berry, this holly berry. And so for the berries I use these 4mm round rubies. These are so cute. Hello, I finished the crowd. You know what time it is? No silly, it's not for the crowd reveal yet. Well, long story short, I have way too much time on my hands. So I was making some matching earrings and necklaces from the leftover gemstones. They were actually for my friends for the photo shoot. Looking at myself doing the jewelry, I was, I was half-assing with making the jewelry, of course. But if you guys would enjoy a genuine tutorial on making these fun little jewelry, I would gladly make them. I just don't know if that would make enough content for a video. And speaking about that, I don't know what you guys want me to do for Christmas next year, so comment down below because I'm opening for some Christmas idea application for next year. And also speaking about that, if you want to make a crown for Christmas, well then this video is probably too late, right? So I guess I see you next year when you come back to this video. Hello, youth and future. How is it? Is the world still alive? Well, that two hours well spent, my friends will be wearing those. And I will be wearing this. Well, speaking too soon, huh? Because my friend didn't make it to the photo shoot. So that's that. But we managed to have a little yes. night out for Christmas. And while I'm prancing and wandering around the mall doing window shopping, 
I found this peculiar entire section dedicated to you know who in a bookstore. I don't know, I just found it funny. I'm not a very political person. Sorry for the noise, the fan, this room is going to have the AC. Anyway, this came in the mail. I wonder what it is. Woo! It's Christmas ornament! So a little backstory. Um, my family, we don't have the tradition to celebrate Christmas every year because we're not Christian. But you know Christmas is that time of the year where I wish to convert to Christian. Wait, try being inside that. I've always been obsessed with Christmas tree decoration and ornaments and all that stuff and we never had those because as I said we don't celebrate Christmas. So this is the first time that I bought these. I also ordered some confetti fabric for the backdrop. At first I was thinking green for the backdrop but then I realized that green is not the most Color oh, this is the final college. It's just an empty room in my house. It's supposed to be the, the drawing room, but it's been three years since we moved here and nobody gave a shit, so I'm, I'm turning this into my studio. My first choice was to pick that wall as the backdrop, but I, I was planning to hang the fabric with those hangers that has the beside tape in the back and you just glue it to a surface, so I was thinking. First wall and the beside tape are not the best of workers, so I think it would be more clever to glue these on glass. Yeah, I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. Don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I don't need to hang my stocking there upon the fireplace. Santa Claus will make me happy with a toy on Christmas Day. I just want you for my own, more than you, you could, could ever know. Make so make my, my wish come true, cause baby all I want for Christmas is I should have stuck to my gut and go for the green because I hate the brown so much that I have to take off all of the ornaments and paint it with some green paint that I diluted with some water because I still want a little bit of that dark brown undertone to show through the green because that's the color of Christmas tree. I think this came out pretty decent. What more can I do? <gasps> what is your time? What you guys are spectating right now is a wild Austin in its natural habitat. The peculiar behavior is called self-portrait photography. <coughs> anyway, if you guys are wondering why I kept looking at my phone, it's because the phone is my remote control to the camera. For more detailed tutorials, comment down below to let me know if you want me to make a video on how I photograph myself in glamour shots for future projects. It's been a lovely 2020, beside everything. My channel is about to turn one year old in a week, so I have to say thank you for 1.5 
1,000 subscriber. And if you're not one of those 1.5k, what are you doing? Subscribe! Well, see y'all in 2021. If humanity survives. Merry Christmas time. Happy holiday.